Hello student, welcome to today's lesson. This is biology lesson for grade 12. Student, in our last lesson, we have seen other substances that affect an enzyme action, including inhibitor, irreversible and irreversible part. In our day's lesson, we are going to see a new unit called cell biology. Under this one, we will see some theory of a cell transport across plasma membrane and other cell organelles. Student, after the end of this lesson, we will be able to explain model of cell membrane, differentiate passive and that of active transport, and again list and explain function of cell membrane. Student, do you know what is cell biology to mean? Well then, it is the vast field of biology that is dealt by cytologists. With the advancement of microscope, biology come to study the detailed structure of cell. With the extended knowledge of genetics and the cell biology, there were cell theory developments. Cell theory means a theory that speak or that explain all about the cell. Cell is a building block of all living organisms. Structurally, functionally, cell is a basic unit of all living organisms. As well, cell comes from that of the pre-existing one. There is no spontaneous generation from its cell. Another, there is hereditary material contained in the cell that can pass from generation to generation. Additionally, all cells have basically the same chemical composition. These are the widely accepted cell theory development today. Well, as I told you earlier, cell is the smallest structural and the functional unit of life. But to say one cell is bigger than that of smaller, we depend on what type of cell we are speaking. To measure the largest cell, we maybe use another unit. To measure another cell, we may use micrometer. We may use nanometer. We may use millimeter. These three are the three smallest units that is very important in measuring the size of the cell. These are an interchangeable or interconvertible unit. We can interconvert millimeter into that of micrometer, and again micrometer into that of nanometer. For example, ostrich egg cell is the largest well-known cell, while bacteria and that of human egg cell is the smallest one too. Student, when cell increase in its dimension or its size, the whole activity become increased together or get bigger. But surface area volume ratio of the cell doesn't increase together. For example, let's see this cell. This cell is the smallest cell, that its dimension is one arbitrary unit. When this cell becomes increased to that of this one, its dimension becomes increased to that of two arbitrary units. When this cell becomes increased to this one, this cell becomes, its dimension becomes increased to that of four arbitrary units. Here, when you say, Surface area volume ratio of a cell, volume determine the demand that cell can be rise to the environment. Whereas surface can be supplying what the cell can be need to fulfill the cell need. Supply here. Cell supply. Whereas this one is demand. So here, since surface area increase in square and the volume become increase in cube, when the cell become increases in dimension or that of size, surface area become decrease and the volume become come to increase. 
the demand of this larger cell is high. The supply of this cell is become low. The demand of this cell is bit higher. And again, the supply of this cell is again two. But here, the demand of this cell is become low. And again, supply for this one is high. So, the surface area volume ratio of smaller cell is bigger than the surface area volume ratio of larger cell. For example, if you compare the surface area volume ratio of rat and elephant, that of the rat is very high. Means, for example, for cell A here, surface area volume ratio is 6 to 1. 6 supply without of 1 demand. For B, 3 supply without of 1 demand, which is come to decrease. For C, the larger cell, which is mostly come together. The cell become rise high demand, and again the amount they are going to supply is very less, which means almost 1.5 to that of 1, almost similar. When the cell become increase, surface area volume ratio may not be doubled together. Additionally, based on the absence or presence of nuclear membrane, cell can be classified in that of prokaryotic and that of eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic are a larger cell that contain nucleus, whereas prokaryotic cells are the smallest cell that are devoid of nuclear membrane. So, because there is no nuclear membrane in bacteria, bacteria is the well known prokaryotic cell. The whole organelle or the whole cell metabolism or genetic activity becomes suspended in that of cytoplasm of the cell. Nucleus like or circular plasm become suspended in uh, the cytoplasm and they again they have this like structure. In animal cell there is nucleus and again in plant cell there is nucleus with so many organelles found there. So there is isolation of cytoplasm and organelle and they again nucleus by their nuclear membrane. But here bacteria especially archaebacteria they are a basis for that of evolution of this one by endosymbiont theory. Endosymbiont. When they are internally depend on one another or interaction, there is larger life can be formed. Endosymbiont theory. Bacteria is a basis that can evolve into that of plants and that of animals. When they are internally depend on one another. This theory is said to be endosymbiont theory. Well then, student, part of cell and that of their function, which is another topic that we are going to see, cell membrane. Sometimes cell membrane is considered as plasma membrane. And again, it is defined as a living layer of a cell that is found as surface of the cell, which is very important in isolation of cell from its surrounding environment. It is a boundary between cell with its environment. We cannot be touched with our environment. We are isolated because of the presence of our surface plasma membrane. Plasma membrane gives so many functions for the cell. For example, it can enclose organelle and other contents in the cytoplasm. As well, it can give mechanical support for the cell too. Additionally, it allows exit of unnecessary substance from the cell, and again, entry of the most important substance into the cell. Notice this one. We can have cell signaling. Something that touch or relay over our membrane can be detected by plasma membrane. There is a detector. In human, there is a hormone receptor or animal. In another organism, in plants, there is a hormone too. And again, in immune system, they can be received for that of antibody antigen because of there is a surface plasma membrane present. There are so many models and so many models can be advanced over that of plasma membrane. The one well-studied model about that of plasma membrane are two models. The one are Duffs and Daniel model, which is proposed in 1935. This model proposed that Plasma membrane contain both protein and lipid within it. This model by itself is termed as a sandwich. Plasma membrane is 
a sandwich of protein and that of phospholipids found as protein make a surface bread when phospholipid is a filling one a bread and a filling one here because there is no explanation on what they can be suggest about plasma membrane and again there is no supportive evidence this mode is not as much accepted today they explain this one protein make the upper bread part the sandwich and they again protein make the lower or that of the tail one when phospholipid bilayer can be act as a filling there is no explanation why protein occupies the head in the tail and why phospholipid can be found as a middle but they suggest there is a protein lined pore in them the another model in the widely accepted today about plasma membrane is fluid mosaic model which is explained by Nicholson and that of Singer in 1972. They rejected sandwich model and they accepted phospholipid bilayer. As phospholipid is a base for plasma membrane formation. As phospholipid is an important component of plasma membrane. They changed the arrangement of plasma membrane from sandwich man. They changed the arrangement from that of sandwich to that of bilayer formation. They assume here there is a protein that of lipid in plasma membrane, but the arrangement may be different, where a mosaic of protein is immersed in fluid bilayer of phospholipid. Here, the arrangement is not static, but it is dynamic, but it is fluid again. It is constantly changing its position. Accordingly, they give us membrane half this like structure. They support everything that they explain in a evidential manner. There is a supportive evidence for that of beyond this model. For example, here, the phospholipid head can be containing hydrophilic parts. It is a water loving head containing a phosphate group. There is a phosphate group. There is a polar head, which is move away from that of the water and they move to, into that of the water. Whereas a protein can be found as the middle of this one. A mosaic of protein found as the middle of head part and that of tail part. And again, there is another part of protein that can be served so many functions are. For example, integral protein, which is intrinsic protein encompassing large part of a membrane which is act as a transporter protein transporting material across the membrane notice this one there is a peripheral protein which encompass or that span a few place of a membrane which is important in attaching integral protein to that of its cytoskeleton another there is again channel protein which have a pore of alloying or that of transport of smaller ion across a membrane there is again cholesterol which is very important in determining cell fluidity if cell is more saturated or that of more fluid they can capable to follow they may not be have a proper arrangement or that of position so cholesterol is very important in determining reducing cell membrane not to be overflowed. And again, there is glycoprotein in plasma membrane, which is very important in cell immune system too. Then again, there is glycoprotein too, which is very important again in cell recognition. There is carrier protein again, which is very important in transportation of larger materials, molecules in the particle across the cell. By raising this and that of else like observation of evidence, why they can be positioned as the head and that as the tail, and why protein can be found as a middle, there is supported by an evidence. So, this model is widely accepted today. Student, so do you know what by means the term selectively permeability of plasma membrane to mean?
Well then, when you say selectively permeable, there is a substance that can be small sized must be allowed to pass through it through the pore of membrane. And again, because plasma membrane is made from that of a phospholipid bilayer, only lipid soluble particle can be passed through it. And again, non-polar particle can be passed through it again. Plasma membrane can select substance to become a low to enter, a low to pass. The two main process by which substance can be crossed through that of plasma membrane are passive transport and active transport process. Student, do you know what is the difference between these two processes? Well, then, when we say passive process, it is a process that doesn't depend on energy expenditure from ATP metabolism. But for all passive processes to become takes place, they depend on concentration gradients. There must be presence of concentration difference. For example, if I spray certain perfume in certain class, the perfume can be passed from that of high concentration area to that of low one until they become saturated or that of maintain equilibrium. So, for passive, it depends on some concentration gradient. Some example of passive transport are one, simple diffusion. A movement of particle from highly concentrated area to that of low one until they get equilibrium. There is no node of transporter protein here. There is no carrier protein here too. There is no channel protein here too. Another facilitated. There is a factor that can be facilitated for this type of diffusion to become takes place. Means there is a carrier protein can be present. Channel protein may be support or facilitate the process. The other part of passive transport is osmosis, which is essential for transportation of water across plasma membrane from where it is found in high water potential to its low water potential. Well then, student, there are so many factors that affect the process. Temperature is the very important one. Distance of from where passive process can be takes place. Surface area of a membrane is two. And again, concentration gradient is another factor. So, very good. Active process. When we say active process, it is a process that need energy expenditure to move particles. Reversely, active transport evolves a movement of substance from where they are found in low concentrated area to that of high concentrated. So, there is no need of concentration gradiency in active transport system. For example, a system of endocytosis, taking of larger particle from outside of the cell into that of the inner one, endocytosis. Some type of endocytosis process are phagocytosis, which is very abundant in our white blood cell, and that of amoeba cell. They take larger particle from the outside in the internalizing into that of the cell by forming larger vesicles. And again, it is sometimes considered as cell eating. Another type of endocytosis is pinocytosis, taking of a fluid particle into that of the cell. The else part is said to be receptor-mediated endocytosis, taking of particle into the cell where they contain a receptor area, receptor sites. The another part of active transport that need energy metabolism from ATP is exocytosis, moving of substance outside of the cell, just like that of hormone secretion, just like that of enzyme secretion, is carried out by the system of acting transport called exocytosis. Osmosis, a movement of water molecule 
from where they are found in high water potential to that of low water potential until they are equally moved in both dimension across plasma membrane. It is an special type of diffusion. Let's say the effect of osmosis over that of plant and the animal cell differently. If you place this animal cell, red blood cell, in hypertonic solution, the water that is found in the cell is higher than the water that is found in the environment. So, water prefer to move outside of this cell. Because of this sun, the side of the vacuum will become reduced. The side of cytoplasm that contain water become reduced. Then cell come to shrink. Shrinkage of cell can be takes place here. The one that we call craniation. The another term here, if we place cell in hydrotonic solution, the amount of water that is found in the cell and the environment is balanced. And equal water movement, equilibrium static water movement can be found here. It doesn't bring any change over that of the cell. But here, under hypotonic, if we place a certain cell in hypotonic solution, the water that is found in the environment is greater than the water that is found in the cell. As a result, water prefer to enter into that of cell. Student, obviously, Animal cell lack cell wall. When water enter into the cell, there is a target pressure. This targeting pressure increase the size of vacuum, increase the size of cytoplasm, allows the cell to become swell up. Finally, since there is no target pressure, a target pressure, animal cell become breast. Breastage in animal cell can be encountered. Well then, this is a result of hypotonic solution. The another effect of osmosis over that of the plant cell is if we place onion cell in different osmosis solution, let me see what its effect can be. Let's say under hypertonic, the same is true. Since the water potential of the cell is greater than the water potential of the environment, water prefer to relieve from that of the cell. And again, the size of vacuole gets decreased. And again, the size of cytoplasm gets decreased. Cell become shrinked. And again, the cell become flaccid. Else, under hypotonic solution, but the water potential that is found in the environment, water potential that is found in the environment is greater than the water potential that is found in the cell. Then after, water prefer to enter into that of the cell. Then, the size of the cell become increased, size of vacuole get increased, size of cytoplasm get increased. Together, there is target pressure. Since there is inversely acting wall pressure secreted from that of animal cell wall, rather than breasting just like that of animal cell, there is target, which is very important in plants because it makes plants to become firm and strong, to be support their branches in the leaf. As well, since there is static water movement here, a net water movement in, in the that of out of the cell become takes place in isotonic solution. Well then, let's see this one. This one is active transport system, which involves movement of molecules or particles from low concentrated area to that of high concentrated by using energy from that of ATP metabolism. This one is phagocytosis, which we call endocytosis process, which is taking the particle from the environment by enfolding with the secretion of their vesicle, which is important in amoeba parts and the our white blood cell. And again, the phenocytosis, taking of a fluid parts, a liquid part, cell drinking again, in taking of a particle where receptor mediate is found, which we call receptor mediated. Student, the first and the most important cell organelle is nucleus. Student, do you know as nucleus contain about 30% of volume of the cell? Very good. 
nucleus is very important in controlling cell activity. Most activity of the cell is mastered or controlled by nucleus. Nucleus contain a structure just like that of nuclear envelope, which is double membranes part. There is a full of pore found over that of nuclear envelope, which is very important in exchange of material between cytoplasm and the nucleus. So, nucleus is one double membrane containing organelle. The else part is nucleolus, which is non membrane no membrane boundage here, which is important in generation of information about that of protein synthesis, which is about RNA to that of ribosome again. Ribosome is an organelle where protein synthesis, which is started from that of nucleus. The other section of nucleus is chromatin. Student, do you know what by me is the difference between chromatin and that of chromosome? Well then, when the cell is not ready for division, and they again not stained and visible under a microscope, said to be chromatin. So, chromatin, which is a part of nucleus, and again it is made from that of DNA histone complex. When they are ready to division, they are come together to form a chromosome. Another section is mitochondria. A membrane is bounded, two membranes in mitochondria which is very important in releasing energy by aerobic fibrillation, which is stored in form of ATP. Good. Whereas ribosome is a non-membrane or no-membrane bounded, which is important in protein synthesis. Another very important that differentiates prokaryotic from that of eukaryotic is endoplasmic reticulum, which is a network of membranes that is found only in a eukaryotic cell, which can be divided into two based on presence of surface ribosome or absence. One we call rough endoplasmic reticulum, which contain a surface ribosome, which is important in manufacturing protein and the transporting them. The eldest smooth endoplasmic reticulum in which there is no surface ribosome on the surface. And again, it is concerned to that of lipid synthesis, carbohydrate metabolism, and again, detoxification activity. Another thing is a flattened membrane found in a eukaryotic cell which we call Golgi body, which is very important a modification of a protein made by ribosome and the endoplasmic reticulum and distribute to that of their final destination. For example, if they wanted to be transport protein with that of a carbohydrate, firstly they can modify into that of glycoprotein form. Modification and that of distribution role. The another most important organelle in the cell is lysosome which is a secretion of Golgi body, having a digestive enzyme called hydrolytic enzyme. Very important in digesting. Very important in warning out unnecessary material from the cell. And again, to replace a damaged cell. If there is accumulation of damage in that of old cell become deposited in the cell, lysosome is not functioning well. The another very important is chloroplast, which is only found in plant cell. Very important for the process of photosynthesis, manufacturing their food. Vacuole, very important, which is very important in storage of mineral ions, salts, sugars, and again in plant cell maintaining their shape. Cellulose, which is only found in plant cell again, and important in allowing of substance to enter into the cell and they move outside of the plant cell and again very important in maintaining plant shape too. 
Well done, students. And another very important activity that biologists can be undergoing, which organelles what and what they can be perform is the technique of cell fractionation. When we say cell fractionation, it is a technique that is very important. If a sample of organelle can be found together, differentiating or identifying into component based on their mass or size or density. As they have, as they all have a mass difference, as they all have a size difference. For example, if a homogenized mass of an organelle become added together, a heavy mass organelle need a low centrifugation speed in the settled out first. For example, if different organelles added together, nucleus separate first because of its mass. Another, the another light mass organelle or that of a smaller organelle require high centrifugation speed and settle out last. For example, in the process, ribosome becomes a part last. Try to identify this point, students. When we undergoing the process, the sample must be homogenized in homogenized mixture manner, where this homogenized must be found in suspension or solution form. The suspension must be found in buffered manner. When you say in buffered, maintaining at neutral pH, preventing the structure not to be carrying out any type of chemical reaction. The structure of protein is that of structure of enzyme. Additionally, it must be isotonic, preventing osmotic weight, water gain, or that of loss to that of the cell. If there is osmotic water gain or that of loss, it may be carry out certain problem that it must be maintained as that of isotonic too. Then this, it must be cool. When we say cool, reducing overall an enzyme activity of the cell. For carrying out the technique, the sample must be maintained in homogenized manner. The homogenized manner must be maintained at buffered one with the pH, at its isotonic one, and again at its cool environment one. Well done, student. Generally, in our today's lesson, we have seen cell theory with certain justification. We have seen the type of cell based on absence or presence of nuclear membrane. And again, we have seen the models that explain plasma membrane with the addition to how they can explain or arrange plasma membrane, protein and that of phospholipid. And again, we have seen some cell structure with their function. Finally, we have seen how cell can be identified by using cell fractionization techniques. This is all about today's lesson. In the coming lesson, we will see together energy transformation. Until that, goodbye, students.